I built a tiny nitro burning four stroke engine, but will it run? Yeah, it, it will. I won't waste your time. If you want to learn more, stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome. Today I've got something a little different to share with all of you, a first for both myself and this channel. Everything I've done in the world of RC up to this point has been powered by electricity, but today the folks over at Sterling Kit have sent me this little engine to build and share my experience with all of you. The Semto STNF2 is an inline two-cylinder four-stroke air-cooled engine powered by conventional 20 to 25% nitro fuel like you would use for various other hobby engines. This is a lower cost engine selling for around 200 US dollars, suitable for both educational purposes and can be installed into RC vehicles. While I've never built a model engine, I do have experience with full-scale engines, so hopefully that knowledge trickles down to this project. But again, for full disclosure, I am a complete novice when it comes to nitro-powered model engines. Regardless though, let's dive right into this project. This kit includes just about everything you'll need to get your engine up and running. In addition to the Semto engine, Sterling Kit sent me the complete starter kit, which also includes the fuel lines, a fuel tank, glow plugs, and all of the wiring. The only remaining items that I needed to provide myself were the fuel and the LiPo batteries to heat the glow plugs and run the starter motor. Everything in this kit was labeled, organized, and packaged very well. I never had to hunt down any particular part or piece of hardware. A nice full color operation manual is included. This contains useful information for both the assembly process and running the engine. At times, some common sense was required and maybe some illustrations could have been done a little better, but overall a very useful manual that made the assembly process easy. After doing so many custom projects on this channel, I always appreciate the opportunity to simply build a kit step by step. It's almost therapeutic in a way. I've built and worked on some full-scale engines, so it's pretty cool to be able to essentially do the same thing in the smaller scale. I made sure to use Loctite oil and grease when necessary. I used castor oil and standard automotive axle grease. Not sure if those are the best things to use, but it's what I had on hand. Make sure that the engine can rotate without too much resistance, and pay close attention to the orientation and alignment of certain components. For example, make sure that the camshaft and crankshaft are correctly aligned by positioning the two dots on the pulleys correctly. Some components, such as the seals and the bearings, were understandably quite a snug fit, but with a little persuasion, they always fit well into place. A piston ring compressor and a couple different size drivers are included to assist with installing the small bearings and piston rings. Some of the components were already assembled, like the pistons and the carburetor, which made the assembly process even easier. I was able to finish the assembly in one evening. Here's a look at the finished engine. It certainly looks good, so let's get this thing fired up. As mentioned before, Sterling Kit sent me the complete starter kit, which includes the glow plugs, wiring, fuel line, and fuel tank. I got the engine secured in a vise. It does rattle with more force than I thought it would, so if you're using a similar setup, make sure you clamp it down pretty tight without warping anything. You can buy some nice bases specifically designed for these model engines to use instead. I got the fuel line connected and everything wired up, and although it was a little cold out and I did encounter a few issues as Olsen explained, I was able to get this thing fired up. So I got it running as you just saw. I thought I'd quickly go over some of the wiring. I don't know if it went into a ton of detail in the manual, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Basically these go to your glow plugs, and then you've got your ground, which they got a spot for it right on the other side of the block. You've got your positive and negative for the starter, a Dean's plug for your battery. Apparently you can use either a two or three S LiPo. And this button here is what runs your starter. So when I tried to get this engine running initially, I did have a problem with this module here. Immediately after plugging in a compatible LiPo battery, this started to smoke. Engine smoke is normal, electronic smoke on the other hand, not so much. So it appears I got a dud, unfortunately. Right away, I went ahead and purchased a few more of these module wire assemblies. Sterling Kit did offer a replacement, but the ones I ordered came in faster. This might be unnecessary, but what I decided to do was wire 
the starter motor and the glow plug separately. I thought maybe that would reduce the risk of having another issue with the module since apparently some other folks have had similar issues to what I experienced. Again, maybe not necessary, but that's what I did. So to run the glow plugs, I used a 2S LiPo. This module steps down the voltage to about 1.3 to the glow plugs. And to power the starter motor to get as much speed as I could out of it, I used a 3S LiPo, which I plugged in on this side. Again, you don't need to set it up like I did it here. You can just plug these into your starter and use one battery pack. This is just the setup I use to get this thing running. But the wiring, very simple, just glow plugs, starter, that's it. And then your fuel just goes into the carburetor right here. Very simple. This is the fuel that I used. There might be better stuff out there, I have no idea, but that's what I got. So I got a module that didn't smoke and I was able to send power to the glow plugs and of course I could also run the starter motor off of a 3S for the maximum amount of speed. After a fair amount of trying, I realized that the glow plugs were not getting hot. I had to mess with these plugs a bit to get them to make contact and actually heat up. To me, these don't really feel like spark plugs where they really click in and feel nice and solid. They're just sort of loose, but eventually what I did was I could look in through the exhaust, rotate the engine, and look inside when the valve is open, make sure it's glowing in this one, make sure it's glowing in that one. And so at that point, I knew I had spark. Or I guess more accurately, uh, heat, ignition, whatever you would call it with a glow plug. So as you could probably imagine, once I figured that out, uh, getting this thing started became a lot easier. They say the carburetor is set up from the factory. I ended up needing to adjust it quite a bit in order to get it to run. Depending on the environment that you're running this engine in, you may need to adjust a few things. There's definitely some patience required. You make a little bit of adjustment, little by little. Uh, you start to hear it come to life and then eventually it'll take off. Once I got it running, um, I tried to fine tune it a little bit. I got it to run without the battery plugged in. It was idling good, throttle response was pretty good. I'm not sure if I had this thing tuned up perfectly, but it would start and run reliably. And do keep in mind these engines will make a bit of a mess. It's gonna cover everything in a nice film of oil. But basically the only issue I had with getting this running was ironically enough with the electronics. After that, it's basically just making sure those glow plugs are getting hot, making sure it's getting fuel and having some patience to get it tuned up and get it running. What a cool little engine. As I said, I've only ever built or driven electric powered RC vehicles, so this was a very fun project. I definitely feel that sense of satisfaction after getting this thing fired up. Seems like about as simple as you can make a two cylinder four stroke engine, and it's really fun to put together. Even with no prior Nitro RC experience, I found the assembly process about as simple and straightforward as it could be. Sure, I could nitpick a few things here and there in the manual, but really with just a bit of common sense, it was all pretty straightforward. Everything fit together perfectly, the parts were well organized, and everything seemed well made. Although as I mentioned, I did encounter a few issues before I could get this thing to run. Aside from the defective module, I really can't complain. Am I ready to sell all of my electric powered vehicles? Absolutely not. The simplicity, reliability, and smooth operation of those is definitely not something I want to give up, but I certainly get the appeal of these little engines. As cool as it would be to incorporate this little engine into a project, it's not something I'm really looking to tackle right now, though I would like to build a nice stand for it. While the engine is small enough to fit in a lot of one tenth or larger scale vehicles, unless you're installing it in a vehicle that was designed for nitro, some engineering will be required to make it work with the existing components. Also in addition for needing the space for the engine, keep in mind you also need a fuel tank, a starting system, a clutch, and a braking system. It certainly can and has been done, as showcased on a number of awesome channels here on YouTube. Obviously, I can't really say anything about the longevity or power of this motor. I can only really judge it based off the assembly process and the little that I've ran it so far. If this type of project looks interesting to you, if you have a fair amount of patience and some mechanical knowledge, this is definitely a fun project and something I'd recommend trying out. Sterling Kit offers a wide variety of engines, including stuff like V8s. Those, of course, are going to be more complex and a lot more expensive. The Semto engine is probably hard to beat in terms of price and the ease of assembly. Overall, a very fun project, and I want to thank Sterling Kit for sending this one for review. If you're interested in purchasing one for yourself, I have included the links below in the description. As always, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.